Muji, Muji ngai mwani, mchwani. Thank you. And shall we pray? Our God and our Father, we continue thanking you and lifting up your name, glorifying you for who you are. King of glory, this morning we come before your presence, God Almighty. May your word come to us today so that, Father, it may lift us up, it may change us up, and it may be the way that indeed we crave, the way that indeed we desire for our life. We pray with a lot of thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, our theme for this morning is familiarity. I will try to describe familiarity from the way it is presented in the dictionary. The word familiarity comes from the word familiar. To be familiar is to be friendly, well acquainted, intimate, in a bold way, well known, common, ordinary, or a close friend. That's uh, to be familiar. Now, familiarity can be described as being one very close friendship or acquaintance, intimacy. Two, friendliness or intimacy that is too bold or not wanted. Three, the fact of having close knowledge of or experience with something. So looking at the two passages that we have read and understood, um, I'll take the second point of familiarity as what we are trying to share about today, which says friendliness or intimacy that is too bold or not required. Of course, um, the other description of familiarity is about friendship. It says very close friendship or acquaintance, intimacy, or a close friend. But in this case, I think we are looking at uh, familiarity in a different way, which is familiarity, which is too intimacy and not wanted. Um, in the Bemba word, I think familiarity that we are talking about, it's the Ichbelesh. And in the Nyanja word, I think somebody told me at Chizolobes. Ichbelesh or Chizolobes. So that's the type of familiarity we are looking at today. And this familiarity we are looking at, we are looking at familiarity with God. It's not familiarity that we talk about between you and me or between a colleague. It's the kind of familiarity with the word of God or with God. The two passages that we have read, I will center my message on Matthew 21, verse 10 to 13. So in this kind of familiarity, we are saying it is the familiarity that is not required, meaning in our worship to God, I think there are some times when yes, friendliness with God is okay, having a good relationship with God is okay, having a, an acquaintance with God is okay, but then what makes it now in this context for this thing to be a kind of familiarity that is not required? So I will pick especially verse 13. Verse 13, the scripture the scripture declares, my temple will be called 
a house of prayer but you have turned it into a den of thieves that is God lamenting saying my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have turned it into a den of thieves There are two phrases, or there's one phrase that I want also to talk about and explain in two ways. Because there's the word temple. The word temple, the first explanation, the word temple is a place of worship. It is a building that has been declared to worship our God, to give glory, to exalt our Lord. So if a building has been done and consecrated and declared that it is for worshipping God, it becomes a house of God, as he says, my temple. Then the second one, I will talk about a temple, which is a figurative explanation of a human body. A human body is also a temple of God. It's a body of Christ. I am a temple of God, meaning the way I live, the way I stay. If we are saying the temple is a house of prayer, a house of God, if I am a temple of God, it means I also qualify to be a house of God where God should dwell in, where God should live in. So the first description, I will give you Isaiah 56 verse 7, that describes a building or talks about a building, a temple being a house of God. And the second one, which is a descriptive of a human body or a body of Christ, that's Romans 12 verse 1. So these are the points that we are going to, to reflect on in our sharing this morning. God desires that a building that is declared or put up as a house of prayer must be subjected to what it deserves to be. The kind of familiarity which is too bold and unwanted that will expose the house of prayer is what is in God's sight. It is not better. It is not pleasing. And in the scripture we have read, it is referred to as in, as good as that being of whom, a den of thieves. So in this scripture, God explained and lamented to say, you have turned my house into a den of thieves. When we briefly look at the scripture, it was at the point when Jesus went to the temple and he turned tables. He turned the tables he was hurt, he was angry with them, and he told them that this is the house of my father, and you have turned it into a den of thieves. So when we look at the den of thieves, or when we look at the word familiarity, which is ichibelesh, ichibelesh kulibalesa, ichibelesh kulibayawe, abatubanga. It can, in that time, we can say yes, that was what it was. But even now, the manner that we worship our God, the manner that we appear, how we present ourselves in this house of God, in the house of prayer, it can also qualify us at times as being in the den of thieves, as being the den of thieves that God is talking about. The den of thieves did not only apply to those people, it can be applicable to you and me, depending on the manner that I carry on when I say I'm coming, I'm in the house of the Lord, I'm worshipping the God, I'm exalting this God that created me. I have a few points that we have to reflect on. I'll start with our how we appear, how we come when we are coming to the house of God, to the house of the Lord, do we come in time?
Do I come in time or do I come at the time that I want? Five minutes late, two minutes late, 20 minutes late. For me, it's fine. I walk in the house of the Lord. It's very there are times we attend board meetings. There are times we attend any other functions or meetings. I will rush to the board meeting because I know that my chair, my director, who scored me. 15 minutes before a board meeting, I will be seated on a chair. Everyone will be seated because... The, the, the director who scored us. There are times any other meeting that you go to, we want to rush. Sometimes when I come to the parties that you share, come waiting that you share, because I want to see everything from beginning to end. Everybody in the last step, but we can have a swing and walk back on to the house of God. Casually, five minutes, two minutes, ten minutes, it's okay. It's very shh. Pretty bad. Sometimes we come, we are sitting on the pew in St. Matthew's Hall. All we are doing is gossiping. In an inch, Kala Papa Tia, Papa Riva Nangoma. A papa di wana chibuye, paka chipa di wakreya mchima. Ichibele shh, kuri balesa. Ni shikuno ama pepo yari ni proses, bakwa ya bale imba limbi. Limbi bashima pepo bale pepesha. Limbi ama announcements yari ni proses. Ifo pantu natuwa familiarity has set in between me and God. So I have no reverence for God. Chweresh Navaresa. Ichweresh in the house of God. How am I different from what is, is referring to as den of thieves? Because a thief is not only that person who attack you at gunpoint. It's not only that person who will rob you in the night or in the car. Even as I rob God's time, I'm a robber. Ni njibe ishita ya balesa. Rilaru inendi mu gossip. Mone nyefe wafwele. Tapide. Na mwa mwona. Echwa shika ni lepo padia. Ah, padia. Mm-mm. Sometimes in the whole service, I'm on WhatsApp, I'm on Facebook, ninja kalapapiu, but ninja samchishi muna balesa. According to my walking in, according to my living home, coming here, nchile mchishi muna balesa, according to me. Na kunga nda ninda ya. I've gone to the house of God. I come here, I'm busy on my WhatsApp. I'm busy Facebook. Even phones sometimes, they could not be messages that are of agency. I mean, if you, you come all the way to come and worship the God, to come and worship this God who is your creator, who is your maker, what is a phone call message to disturb your worship? How important is the phone call message that it can disturb your worship of your creator? That it can disturb the exaltation of God, the Almighty, the greatest Yahweh. Sometimes we come with hangovers in the house of God Kaita chidi za wapya munzi uche mbu uche kwacha Hang over us Nepo wike refe Even the neighbor seated next to Hang over Fenunka Worshipping your God In the house of God 
and I'm, I can say I'm different from the den of thieves that is being referred to. Sometimes the church is coupled with stealing because there's no one who will come from somewhere, nowhere. I can remote control either. So the stealing is done by within. You walk in the house of the Lord. Even around here, we've lost property. Computers, machinery, a lot of things have been lost here by us within ourselves because no one will see a computer here no a computer coming from chilanga chingola we see ourselves we know what we have we know what we possess so it's coupled with all kinds of stealing all kinds of thefts the house of god that we want to be, that we are in. Sometimes to the married couples, not to the singles, you are church members. Mulibamu church mo, you are you power ishba, you poya du papara pene, mwayamba ma intimate relationships. Kaidi mwa kumana mu church. So meaning you are in the house of God where you are proposing one another married couple, married couple, married person, married person. Each village. There are so many things that we do. Whatever does not please God, whatever is not pleasing in the sight of God, most of them, we know them, I know them, you know them. It's just formality that it's a sermon, we have to talk about them, but they are muina no muina, bags and bags, pockets and pockets of things that we feel maybe, ah, kaka, no, no, aka. but it's in the house of the Lord. And still, it does not miss out, even in the word of God, in the Bible, all the things that we can talk about as not being right in the presence of God, they are listed there. Sometimes we even read and see them and say, nah. It's just this, uh, it's just a small gossip over an amubiri. But house of God says house of prayer not house of gossip not house of stealing not house of mischief it says house of god house of prayer jeremiah 7 verse 11 god laments god asks has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of thieves? In your eyes, behold, I even I have seen it, says the Lord. So there's nothing that we can hide. There's nothing that one can hide. Even where you are seated on the pew, by Facebook now, Usana wana but it says, even I, I have seen. The roof, the building, maybe we think the building above us not Usama Sometimes I wonder, what do we think about? Kuchengela tu, tukwa mwana chituari chengela. Oh, what goes? in my mind when I'm doing something that I know it is not right in the house of God. Because God is seeing me. He has said it. I have seen. 
but in your eyes is it right because I have sinned says the Lord in the scripture that we have read when Jesus saw what was happening in the temple in Jerusalem he was torn apart he was angry he realized how hard how hard-hearted the people had become. He was scared to learn that his death and his blood soon to be shed for the sins of the world would be of little appreciation by these people if they could exhibit such kind of familiarity at the house of my father. The time that uh, Jesus went to Jerusalem to this temple, it was just after his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, meaning it was just a few days before his crucifixion, before he could lay his life for you and me, before he could redeem us on the cross and shed his blood, and he experienced such. So, Mutimawadi Kalipa, he was stirred with anger. I think he lamented. Now, my people, in few days' time, Nkaya Mukuba Fuila. In few days' time, Nkaya Pam Salaba Uyoa Sevana. I'll shed my blood for them for their sake, for their salvation, for their freedom from sin. And now they are behaving like this. Jesus lamented. He was angry. He was stirred with anger. This part, I, I remember my grandmother used to illustrate. He used to illustrate. She never fell on a uniform with Fine, but I pick a new way church. Sometimes she would just pick up this scripture and read to me. And then she would just start practicing or maybe just to do a bit of drama. She would start kicking here. So I have a panty then I'm pan and boom. She would do explain to me the showing the anger that Jesus felt that is about to die for me, and I still am in this kind of behavior. I'm trying to relate with the period that we are. Just a few weeks from now, to Kalasefia, Ukufiarwa kwa Mrugu, she will be celebrating in remembrance the birth of our Savior, how he came down and left heavens. He left the bunch of all the luxuries of heaven. He left to come, to be born, to die for us, so that he could be born as human and then die for us. So at this time of time, when such a message comes to you and me, it should also be a time of reflection also to realize and say, as I'm receiving, I'm receiving the, the new birth. Take it that it's a new birth, not a birth of a savior, but take it that it's a new birth in your heart. It's a rebirth in your heart. It's rebuilding your status. It's rebuilding your character. It is rebuilding and reflecting in the things that really does not please the presence of God when you earnestly say, I worship my God earnestly. So this is the time also that as we prepare for that time, people become so excited with Christmas, Bambita Beshiva, Bambonafia Chini Christmas, bright colors, what have you, but you and I, we know why we should celebrate the birth of our Lord. We know why we should celebrate the birth of Jesus. It's not to eat cake, not to eat chicken, but it's just to reflect, to say, This is the time that he came to be born and then to die for my
redemption, to come and redeem us. In my other definition of the temple, which I said the temple also is your body and my body. It is the temple of God. It's the body of Christ. So this temple, my body now, there are some characteristics also that now I make familiarity with my body. So number each relation of mobile wandi, each dwala which indeed comes out ukulete chivereshi kuri desa. It starts by me now having familiarity by me ukwamba chivereshi no mobile wandi. Ero nareta number each chivereshi kuri desa munga ndaya kwa desa. The points I went through, I talked of our late coming. Sometimes they are just simple things that make us walk 25 minutes late. Because Kunganda, I want to dress, I want to turn on the mirror, I want to look nice, I want to powder my face, my hair. Time is going because I am trying to please my flesh. So these familiarity desires of the flesh are the ones which now cause me to transfer this familiarity to God. Because my coming late home, I was found that in pleasing my body, which is also the temple of God, but I'm doing things in the wrong thing because I'm not timing myself. Okay, I need to dress my body. I need to powder. I need. Why can't I do them all in time so that this familiarity with my body does not get transferred to the house of God. I do with it. The gossip also. The gossip is because we want to feed our flesh. Because my mouth wants to talk. Because my mouth wants to lie. So that's what is causing me now my bodily desires, my fleshly desires. Because I want to feed my mouth with lies. I will sit there and start gossiping on the pew while the service is going on, while the choir are ministering. I want to do that gossip. The Facebooks, the WhatsApp, it's because I want to feed my eyes. Those are fleshly desires. I want to feed my eyes, but I'm doing it again in the house of the Lord. So it is causing me to have familiarity. To do each relish Nabalesa. The hangovers. It's because I want to familiar familiarity with my body. Each relish no mobile wandi. Kuriaka. Echa lane ngatin sena hangover kuno. Nenze kuchezera. Irefka fesix kolo kodimbi. Na pia 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 nif kana muno ninch kala hangover nunkeni nunkeni because of who now each velesh cha mubi di want na leta chalenga na leta each velesh kuri valesa so when we try to reflect. Um, I will talk of a parable in the Bible where this man had two sons. When he spoke to the first son, Sani, can you do some work in the vineyard? The son said, ah, no, your body, no, me, no, 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 ah, you are wasting my time. And then, Afterwards, he repented and went and did the work. The other son, the father said, Sani, who ungafuakom garden in the vineyard? The son said, Okay, daddy, no hassle, daddy, okay, daddy, no hassle. I'll be done in five minutes. 
and he never did that. So the two scenarios that I've said, I'm talking about ourselves who come in here and we are very much aware of the word of God and to a liar. I worship my God earnestly. In earnestly everything, my God, I worship. We enter the house of God. Ichibeleshi. Chayamba. Munga ndaya valesa. Valiatu shire panse. The son who has said, no, that I can't do it. Not washa panse, but ya ava. That person will repent. They will repent and enter the house of the Lord and do everything pleasing the sight of God. And sometimes when we look at them, if we start complaining. Ah, number. Aba chava shani, aba kwa chivala fok tuchila, aba bale fok tuchila, aba chava shani, we a lot of things. Why? Ichivele shh. Kuli wale, secho tuwa kwa te chivele shh. Echa la tumwene okushari la kunuma. Familiarity with the word of God. Ichivele shh, chizovelez. Na valesa. It's what may hinder some of the things that may attract a blessing in our daily endeavors. There are the other scripture that we read at the conclusion of it, those boys who, want, who did each Elisha to Elisha, they, they were struck, they were cursed and they were struck and they were eaten, I think, by whether they were wolves or bears, because they attracted a case among themselves. Now, we never did a catch belish. But it's the catch belish. By Ambo Kumutizing, by Ambo Kumumoking. So they, did, they attracted a case among them themselves, and they were struck and eaten by the animals. So it's belish Navalesa. In my conclusion, Hebrews 13, verse 15. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. Uku kwata, uku lesa, uku lesa. Oh, what we are proclaiming should be something that will uplift the name of Jesus. Because I can say the, the opposite of each village, humility. Humility is the word that can replace each village. Because a person who is humble, humility comes from humble. Being humble I think there was a time when we had um, a sermon about humility. Being humble is not being humble is having integrity about yourself, how you perceive this God. Being honest about your prayer life. Being diligent, being loyal to God. Praying and worshipping him earnestly. Deep down from your heart, you cleanse everything. This was about cleansing of the temple. So cleansing about your heart. Let's cleanse our hearts as we prepare to end this year. To usher ourselves into the coming year. Can we sit down and reflect on what things that we feel they are not important I can do in the house of God. Ah, this is very minor. I can do. Can we reflect on that? Tumbi tulukemo. Tumwa na embera shesu. Tumwa na efyo tuwa mutemwa lesa. Efyo tuinga mchindi kalesa. Efyo tuinga mutata kulalesa. 
kushetwa kula konka nyapo kumtata kula mushire yine iya kweba ati askala tuipusha ati mushemuli mpupu are you thieves is this a den of thieves no it is not it is a house of god packed with it. wonderful nice hearted christians and believers like all of you that is what this house is i declare it it's not a house of dens it's not a den of thieves but it's a house of god where christians believers those who love god come to worship him shall we pray Father, we give you the praise and honor for the word that you have given unto us today. May the entire world lay upon the house of prayer, their burdens and grief. The house of prayer can endure all that all because Jesus is the living stone upon which the house of prayer was built. With perfect safety, we may build upon the living stone who is Christ. Christ is, is a tried stone. Those who trust in him, he never disappoints. He has gone every test. In Christ we find relief because he is the, founder, the foundation stone of every house of prayer. With a lot of thanksgiving we pray in glory. Amen.